Skill-based matchmaking is a good thing. Theoretically. Skill-based matchmaking is a hotly debated topic within the first-person shooter community. On the one hand, you have players that believe skill-based matchmaking is ruining modern gaming. And on the other, you have grown-ups, and they've been buttonheads for quite some time now. I personally do not care for skill-based matchmaking. I bring a sort of shithead vibe to the PvP match that skill-based matchmaking don't really like. However, what I like even less than skill-based matchmaking are bad, bad arguments. arguments. So we're going to be discussing why skill-based matchmaking is a good thing, in theory, by addressing the main criticisms I frequently see. But before we do that, let's talk about why skill-based matchmaking actually sucks ass. ass. Let's imagine that your online matchmaking algorithm for your first-person shooter video game is like an RPG create-a-character system. You have three stats that you can distribute points into, connection quality, skill-based matchmaking, and queue time. You have a limited amount of points, so you have to figure out how you want to build your algorithm. The skill-based matchmaking haters out there would probably build it something like this. Maximize connection quality so the risk of someone in your lobby lagging is as low as possible, and put the rest into queue time so that it's good enough. The issue with skill-based matchmaking is that in order to implement it, you have to take some points from one of the other stats. If you were to pull points from queue times, your matches would still be lag-free, but it would take significantly more time to find a match. This is obviously problematic because players don't want to wait in a queue, they want to play the game. That's why they loaded in a quick play, it has quick right in the name. If the queue times balloon too high, players will stop queuing and just go play something else. This sucks ass for the players, who just want to play the game, but it also sucks ass for the devs, who want people to play the game, because that's how they make their money through microtransactions, season passes, and DLC. Alternatively, you could create a matchmaking system like this, Jack of all trades, master of none. This is, however, by its very definition, fucking mid. Furthermore, every point that is pulled from connection quality increases the risk that someone in the lobby will lag, and lagging is essentially indiscernible from cheating. Teleporting around, shooting you through walls, not taking any damage, Let's play a game called Lagging or Cheating! The entire purpose of skill-based matchmaking is to create a fair, competitive environment. However, in the pursuit of fairness, they've created an environment that runs the risk of injecting unfairness into the match through poor connection quality. How could you consider a system which achieves the exact opposite of its intended goal anything other than an abject, abject failure. failure? Another aspect of matchmaking we haven't talked about yet is player population. This is less of a stat that you put points into and more of a buff slash debuff type scenario. When the player population is high, you get a buff to your stats, and inversely, when the player population is low, you get a debuff. This becomes problematic when we consider this graph. The y-axis represents player population, and the x-axis represents player skill. On the left you have low skill, in the middle you have average skill, and on the right you have high skill. Let's say that this is the skill band of your average player. If we apply the same skill band to both low and high skill players, you see that their player pool is considerably smaller than the average player. Low skill and high skill players intrinsically have the low player population debuff by default. This means that they have an inferior experience right out of the gate, which is obviously problematic. The players on the higher end of the skill spectrum tend to be those who have put the most amount of time into the game. It takes a level of dedication and effort in order to get this good, and it's a bit of a slap in the face to hand your most passionate player base an inferior experience vis-a-vis -vis long queue times and laggy lobbies. What's even more egregious is how this impacts the lower skill players. These are the players who are supposed to gain the most from skill-based matchmaking, but instead they actually receive a worse experience. And the most fucked up thing about all of this is that I made it all up. It's all bullshit. Now, it's not my intention to be disingenuous or to lie to you, but I have to make this shit up because I don't know what I'm talking about. And neither do you. Neither one of us has any understanding of the complex mechanisms at play when it comes to the matchmaking of any of these AAA first-person shooters. The best we can do is guess, based on a fundamental understanding of how sorting algorithms work, our own personal experience with the matchmaking, and rudimentary logic. Let's go back to this graph. Hypothetically, low and high skill players would have a smaller player pool if we used this skill band. But what if, as you deviate from the average, your skill band expands so you always have access to the same exact size player pool? 
Doesn't that just completely obliterate the notion that low skill and high skill players will have a substandard experience because of skill based matchmaking? What if we use a matchmaking system that looks like this? But Slick, you already said the queue times would be too long. What about the queue times people don't want to wait that long? Okay, but what if after a certain amount of time, the matchmaking shifted to this? More time passes and it shifts again and again. What if there is a hard deadline for a match to start, where after X amount of time, the match needs to start with a full lobby? The matchmaking then shifts to something like this. What we have just created is a matchmaking system that prioritizes connection quality as the number one metric while maintaining queue time as the number two metric. Which is exactly what the people who hate skill-based matchmaking want. However, we have also implemented skill-based matchmaking at the same time. This is what's known in the grown-up world as a compromise. compromise. Everyone should want the same thing. What's best for the game, what's best for the community. And what's best for both is a large, healthy player base. With a dwindling player base, connection-based matchmaking looks like this. However, if the implementation of skill-based matchmaking increases player retention, your matchmaking system has the potential to look like this. If skill-based matchmaking has a positive effect on player population, there is no reason to oppose it because in the end, everybody wins. Theoretically. A common argument I hear is that improving under skill-based matchmaking is a waste of time because as you get better, your opponents get better as well. You don't feel any progress because the outcome of matches stays the same even as you improve. I feel like a lot of players who say things like this are kind of telling on themselves. A constant accusation against those who oppose skill-based matchmaking is that they want to pub stomp players worse than them. Of course, such a vile accusation is vehemently, vehemently, vehem do I have to really search this? God damn it. Vehemently. Vehemently, okay, good. Of course, such a vile accusation is vehemently denied. However, it sounds a lot like they want to improve while their opponents stay at the same level. As they continue to improve, the gap between them and their opponents will continue to widen, with the end result being more kills per match and a higher KD. Nope, certainly doesn't sound like pub stomping to me. You can either say improving under skill-based matchmaking is unrewarding or that you don't want to stomp noobs, but you can't say them both at the same time. There are other more meaningful ways to measure your self-improvement that are completely decoupled from big number at end of match. For example, being able to perform feats you previously weren't able to do. Maybe it's hitting a quick scope, maybe it's predicting an opponent's play and executing a successful counter. Self-improvement isn't about comparing yourself to others. It's about comparing your current self to your past self. It's about comparing your current self to the potential future self you can become. Now that we're done with all the philosophical masturbation, let's take everything I just said and throw it in the garbage because it doesn't, doesn't fucking, fucking matter. matter. You are mathematically, objectively rewarded for improving under skill-based matchmaking, making the initial assertion wrong. Let's take another look at the player skill bell curve. Here's your average player and this is their skill window. If we cut this window in half, you'll notice that 50% of the players are worse and 50% of the players are better. Now let's take a look at the below average player. When we cut their skill window in half, you'll notice something peculiar. The low skill player has less players worse than them and more players better than them. I wonder what kind of crazy shit is gonna happen when we look at a player on the high end of the skill bracket. Oh, would you look at that? The high skill player has more players below their skill level and less players above. Improving makes winning easier, even under skill-based matchmaking. Now, of course, if you remove skill-based matchmaking, there is far greater reward for improvement, but this kind of scenario would lead to pub stomping, and we all know you don't want that. I hear it all of the time. I can't play with my friends who are worse than me because when I do, skill-based matchmaking puts opponents of my level in our lobbies and my friends get their asses beat. This isn't entirely untrue, but it's only a very small portion of the bigger picture. Let's say that the player base is divided into 10 different skill ranks for matchmaking purposes. A level 3 wants to play with their level 7 friend. In Destiny 2, matchmaking takes the average skill of the players in the fire team and uses that value when queuing. But Slick, how do you know that that's how they do it? Because I asked.
because I asked. So, 3 plus 7 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. The game considers both players as a level 5 for matchmaking purposes. The skill-based matchmaking is not that strict when it comes to quick play, so the game is going to look for 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, and 7s. You might see this and think, aha, I was right. The level 3 will be playing opponents at their level or higher. True, the level 3 is going to be having a bit of a tough time, but let's take a look at how this exact scenario plays out with no skill-based matchmaking whatsoever. Well, right off the bat, they'll be playing against 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, and 7s. So far, the matchmaking is identical. identical. But slick of the ones and twos, slick of the ones and twos. Yes, removing skill-based matchmaking will allow the inclusion of ones and twos into the lobby, making it so that the level 3 has an easier time. But of course, you know exactly where we're going from here, don't you? The removal of skill-based matchmaking brings in ones and twos, but also brings in eights, nines, and tens as well. You are adding two lower skill brackets and three higher skill brackets for a net gain of negative one, which is also known as a net, net loss. loss. Not only that, but the degree to which the skill difference is pronounced heavily skews against the level three. The gap between the level 3 and the 2 or 1 is pretty small, but the gap between the 3 and the 8, 9, or 10 is fucking gigantic. The removal of skill-based matchmaking actually makes the lower skill friend's experience considerably worse. Now I would be remiss if I didn't continue to follow the trend of me saying a bunch of stuff and then telling you it's actually nonsense. Let's say a level 5 friend wants to play with his level 9 friend, 5 plus 9 is 14 divided by 2 is 7. The skill window is 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 accordingly. In this scenario, skill-based matchmaking does indeed make for a shittier experience for the lower skill friend. If you remove skill-based matchmaking, we bring in 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s into the mix, which is 4 lower skill brackets, while only bringing in 1 higher skill bracket with the 10s. Furthermore, the skill gap is essentially equal on both sides, with the 1s and 10s effectively cancelling each other out. You may be curious why I spent so much time explaining how skill-based matchmaking is good, only to immediately show how it's not. The entire point of this segment is to disprove the notion that skill-based matchmaking universally makes playing with your friends more difficult. Sometimes it does, sure, but sometimes its absence offers an inferior experience. A classic argument I hear all the time is that skill-based matchmaking makes it impossible to chill or run off metal loadouts because every match is the quick play grand championship. This is once again partially true, but also partially bullshit, and I can prove it with a history lesson. Destiny 2 Forsaken launched on September 4th, 2018. With its launch, it brought the removal of skill-based matchmaking from quick play. Skill-based matchmaking haters rejoiced as they were finally able to chill and run off meta to their heart's content. Forsaken also brought with it two of the most overpowered weapons that Destiny 2 PvP has ever seen, Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten. In order to obtain said weapons, you needed to complete a series of quests, but the ultimate hurdle was hitting a specific rank in comp. A specific rank that a vast majority of the player base was unable to reach. So you have overpowered weapons only available to the upper end of the skill spectrum, and you have no skill-based matchmaking. Surely the high skill players that constantly complain about not being able to chill and run off meta took this golden opportunity to do just that, right? Nope, instead they took their overpowered bullshit and grinded lower skill players into a fine powder and snorted them like they were Adderall. Turns out the desire to play off meta is complete bullshit, or at the very least vastly overstated. I've seen many a Destiny 2 content creator claiming to want to run off meta, seemingly forgetting that their stats are public and whoops would you look at that! Furthermore, it's not just the high skill players that don't care about running off meta, it's literally the entire player base. If a significant portion of the player base cared about running off meta, we wouldn't have a meta in the first place. But every single season of Destiny has had a meta, and that's because good shit helps you win, and winning is fun. Also, why the fuck are we taking what is very clearly a balancing issue and cramming it into matchmaking? Some stuff being better than other stuff has nothing to do with matchmaking. Regardless, no one gives a shit about running off meta. Yes, but Slick, you can still chill while running the meta. Yeah, that's true. But you can also chill under skill-based matchmaking as well. 
This is the part where everything I just said doesn't matter for the folks keeping track at home. Let's say you go into ranked. You run hard meta and you try your ass off, ending up with an 8 out of 10 rank. Afterwards, you want to unwind, so you go into quick play. You take off your meta stuff and you only use 80% of your true power. The game would then give you a hidden rank of about 6 out of 10 because of your lowered output. And now you can chill and or run off meta in quick play. All it took was actually chilling and or running off meta in quick play. Imagine, Imagine that. that. But Slick, how do you know that the PvP playlists in Destiny 2 have different skill ratings from one another instead of just one global skill rating? Because I asked. Because I asked. Imagine the devs giving you a huge sandbox, filling it with a bunch of fun toys. Have fun, bud. Build a cyan castle and do whatever. They leave and come back to find you used a shovel, and only a shovel, to dig miles and miles down into an inescapable pit. Now you're stuck in a hole, complaining that it's the devs' fault as if they're the ones who forced you to main shovel. You look around the lake of fire you find yourself in, and with no self-awareness whatsoever, are befuddled to see you are surrounded by tryhards, not realizing you dug yourself right into reverse elo hell. Now I will say I do believe that the little dumbass who got himself stuck in a fucking nightmare pit of his own creation does deserve to be rescued, regardless of how big of a dumbass that they are. Most skill-based matchmaking systems have a built-in manipulation protection that keeps you from throwing matches in order to lower your rating and getting easier lobbies. The drawback to this is if you spent thousands of matches sweating your ass off in quick play, it's going to take thousands of matches getting your ass beat with off-meta stuff in order to shift the matchmaking in your favor. However, you can fix this by potentially having a soft skill reset at the beginning of every season to give players an opportunity to use the newer weapons and establish what kind of quick play experience they want. That's what's great about skill-based matchmaking. You get to decide the experience you want. Theoretically, want a sweaty one? Play sweaty. Want a casual one? Play casual. Just don't play sweaty, expecting a casual experience, and get surprised when Newton's Third Law whoops your ass. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I don't care for skill-based matchmaking, and I don't. I don't like it for the same reason you don't like it, whether you'll admit it or not. Skill-based matchmaking puts a limiter on the amount of fun I can have. Winning is fun, and skill-based matchmaking makes winning harder for better players. Hypothetically speaking, there is a direct correlation between fun and skill. The better you are, the more fun you'll have. Skill-based matchmaking takes some of the fun from the top players and redistributes it to the masses. The goal of doing this is a net gain of overall total fun. Fun is obviously not objectively measurable. The devs have to instead use metrics like player count and playtime procession. An increase in those metrics leads to more revenue for the developers who quite famously love having food, shelter, and jobs. Players aren't going to play, let alone spend money on, a game that isn't fun for them. If skill-based matchmaking increases these metrics, I'm 100% for it because I just want what's best for the game. I love Destiny, it's one of my favorite games of all time, and I want other people to love it too. I've watched games I love slowly die, and it sucks a big fat dick. I said love you till I'm in the clouds above. You should want the games you love to succeed so that you can continue to enjoy them. In closing, you will never feel the same amount of boundless joy you felt as a small child playing your favorite video game, regardless of how much you complain about skill-based matchmaking on social media. Bye!